today on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The professionals at TRB work to finalize and deliver the Hydra Sports Project. I know that when that boat goes out of here, that we have done the very, very best job that we can. Stewart and Isla Morada Boatworks begin designing and building their very own shallow water skiff. You name it, we, we studied it and beat it to death and talked about it for days and weeks. Uh, so it, we're trying to build the best boat we possibly can, but the skiff's it's in my heart. George Labonte joins Captain Chris Francis aboard his fully restored 24-foot Morgan. Based on our time spent on the water with Chris, his finished project was clearly worth the wait. And that old Morgan not only helped him realize his dream, but would continue to serve him and his clients well into the future. And one man guests, Jim and Jimmy Wells, bring in their custom 28 Bertram for some updated power at Two Rivers. I don't think there's too many boats out there that perform like that boat and, and get the fuel economy like that boat does and looks as custom as it does for what they did. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over-the-top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So at Two Rivers Boatworks, we've been busy working on the Hydra Sport. It came to us, needed some hull repair. Uh, we're super happy with the way that turned out. Now the owner decided that he wants to get the bottom paint redone. He wants to get rid of the anti-fouling paint that's on the bottom and do a nice glossy finish. So we called in a company to come in and take care of the bottom stripping for us. They're an eco-friendly company. They take extra special care to make sure that they're not gonna be putting any of the harmful dust out into the environment and to make sure that everything stays nice and clean during the whole job. Luckily, we've got Chris in the back in the fiberglass shop for us. He's gonna take care of the rest of the boat. Being that we weren't exactly happy, he's gonna get on the sander, get underneath the boat, and take the material down as far as we need it so that we can put a nice glossy finish on there. We realized that eco-blasting didn't work out too well. Boss man and Nate, they, they brought in the big guns and they were like, Chris, let's, let's get this bottom paint off. And I was like, all right, boss. You know, it's super hazardous down there, all that bottom paint, like it's, it's really bad for you. So you gotta make sure you wear a mask kind of at all times. It was a crap show down there. So I had a few different tools that I was using, a few different grits of sandpaper. And I mean, shoot, I just went to town for, like I said, a couple, like probably a good two weeks by myself. Um, I primed it with a gray 545. You know, I said my prayers and then it was time. It was time to pull the trigger. It took me a probably, probably about a good four or five hours to paint the bottom. I did it all in one spray. I, I mean, I didn't leave anything out. It didn't turn into two sprays. I, I did the whole bottom and it was glossy black. It's what, it's what the owner wanted. It was the finish that we wanted. I mean, there was no like overspray. There was no like sagging. It kind of, we, we left it alone really. I didn't even have to go back and wet sand and buff that thing. It was gorgeous. So now that Chris is finished off with the bottom, we're super happy with the way that it came out. There's still a couple of other things inside the boat that need to be done. There was some damage done to the non-skid during the hurricane. So Chris is gonna get up there and come up with some kind of idea to fix that non-skid for us. Anybody who's worked on that, the Diamond Deck non-skid knows the challenges to getting a repair done and making it look nice and neat for the customer. So we had a piece of non-skid from a while back that we already used as a mold uh, and we had some leftovers. So that is what I kind of grabbed a piece of and started shaping to make look like the rest of the top deck. So I whipped up a gel coat and a Cavacil mix. I wiped it on my mold nice and even, pressured it in so it could get all into the diamond plates and everything as, as best as possible. And from there, all I did was I took my vacuum bag and I placed it over there and I plugged in my vacuum line and infusion style, my vacuum sucked down and it sucked the mold as best as it could to the, to the boat, you know? So you, it's almost like you're pressing it, but for an extended period of time. So 
infuse that to the boat and I let it kick for the entire day. We pulled the infusion bag off of it uh, and like it was supposed to, the mold popped right off and it left the impression of the diamond non-skid. I mean, beautifully, like better than we imagined it was gonna be. It, it, it came out great. Dude, there's a first time for everything, huh? I've never done that before, that's pretty sad. <laughs> I have to be very, very honest, I was super impressed with how well this repair turned out. So Chris and I had a discussion on how to, to make this job perfect and make, it, make sure that it was 100%. And quite frankly, it's really up to Chris now to prove that he can make it 100%. I have faith in him, I'm sure he's gonna get the job done. We threw our heads together and instead of having two different patterns try to meet each other and figure out how I was going to try and sand that and make it look beautiful, we decided that we were going to kind of put a break there. Along with the whole shape of the boat, I sanded that and I made it look like it was supposed to be there, like, like it was when you pulled it out of the mold, you know. After sanding it and making it super right, and all I had to do was kind of lay some paint on there and, and make it look right, make it look like it never happened. We were all super impressed. We were all super, you know, happy that it, that it was kind of painless and um, we were getting a boat out the door, man. Literally from six inches away, you would not tell that there was ever a repair done there. Um, I'm super proud of, of the work that he did and this is where I want to go with our business. This is the type of work that I want people to see and I know that when that boat goes out of here, that we have done the very, very best job that we can. When we come back, Stuart and Isla Mirada Boatworks draw up plans for a brand new flax fishing weapon. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. Dreaming of transforming your boat into the envy of the fleet? The experts at Two Rivers Boat Works are dedicated to customizing your boat to your specific needs and personality. Specializing in fiberglass and composites repair, professional painting, systems installation, and more. Founded by boating enthusiasts, we understand the enjoyment of being on the water, offering exceptional design, craftsmanship, and quality so you can spend more time on the water than dreaming about it. Visit our facility in Stuart, Florida and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dream Boat. Join us as Richie DeVito, owner of Stuart and Isla Mirada Boatworks, dreams up the ultimate flat skiff, fueled by his lifelong passion for stalking shallow water game fish. Um, basically, I was born up in, in up, upstate New York, about a half hour outside of the city. And uh, my two grandfathers had passed when I was fairly, fairly young. My dad wasn't a fisherman, but my grandfather's out. So we had these fishing rods in the, in the basement. And we used to live on a little creek um, when I grew up. So I, used to, I was always in the back there catching crawfish and fishing. And, but when I got into fly fishing, I got really obsessed with it. So at that point, when I was in my early 20s. My parents were in Florida. And I, I just come down on vacation to see him. And I'd go to a, a tackle store here. Nobody knew anything about fly fishing. And I was like, oh, when am I coming down? When is the best time for tarpon? What, what are they eating? They didn't know anything. They made me so mad. I'm like, I can do a better job than that. And um, I just decided one day that I was going to go open up a fly shop in Florida. I used, I used to work construction. I used to work heavy construction. I was in the Teamsters Union. I used to run a concrete plant. When the trucks were loaded, I'd get my fly rod out. I'd be casting on a pile of gravel, working on my loops and stuff. Um, but I was just obsessed with it, you know, and um, moved to Florida, opened up a fly shop. I had no money, sold my house, had a little bit of cash, uh, and got to the point where everybody asked me, I go fishing a lot, with a lot of friends and clients that come into the shop. Just started guiding, was like a natural thing, and, and then I got involved with a gentleman named Ralph Parks who got me selling boats, and then just kind of grew, you know, we started making trolling motors, me and my partner Sam did trolling motors at our, our old business, Lenco, and now we're doing a skiff, and I'm just trying to build the best skiff I could possibly build. When Stuart Boatworks bought Isle Mirada Boatworks, we inherited a, a little 18-foot skiff called the Element. And it was a nice little boat, it was done by some very good people, but I wasn't real happy with the hull. It was a very quiet hull, but it, it didn't ride real good, it was kind of wet. But it, it wasn't what I, what I had envisioned for our 18-foot te technical pole and skiff. So we had the cap figured out, that, um, that was done, the deck layout. And then we, we put it, you know, it took the hull we had, 
and scrapped it and put this type of Almorada hull based off of our 24 Almorada, which is known for the way it rides. So um, you know, what I decided to do is do what I know and not try to do it all myself and, and use, the, use our weapons. You know, I've known John Canada from Ocean 5 for, for my Lenco days. So I went to John and said, I want to build this ultimate little skiff. So when Richard approached us, uh, the first thing that he did is he, is he told us, you got to go ride on the Isla Mirada 24. This is the best riding boat. Uh, trust me, you won't, you won't believe it until you ride on it. So we did. We went on the 24 for a ride, and um, we also rode the original 18 uh, previous to that. It, it was an incredible difference, and we totally agreed with him that what they had was the magic bottom. It, it performed you know, the way that they wanted it to in the conditions that they wanted it to. So what we tried to do was blend this new hull design as a hybrid based off of the 24 using the you know the multiple longitudinal step strakes uh, that kind of reduce uh, wetted resistance and provide reduced vertical accelerations and then marry that by taking a, a chine with it has flat turn down edges as it runs forward into something that doesn't create a waker disturbance for fish and is quiet uh, for fishing we talked about the bottom but then from the chine up from the chine to the shear uh, we wanted the product to look like an Isla Mirada, recognizable, you know, just as an uh, auto manufacturer does. No, nobody's looking at the badge. You recognize it when you see it, and you say, oh yes, that's an Isla Mirada. It looks like it belongs in the family. My heart is with a skiff. It's who I am. Um, I, I love getting that skiff. I don't care if I'm fishing it or pulling it or on the, in the bow or on the polling platform. They're just cool little boats. You can do so much with them. They're, they're quiet, so you, know, you can get a lot closer to a fish. You don't spook fish as much. Uh, they're fun to drive, they're, they're economical to operate, they don't burn a lot of fuel, but they're little. So you, you know, you're trying to put all these little things, trying to cram all these things into a little package. So you have to kind of pick and choose what you do. You know, so we got some pretty cool features on this boat that I think most people don't have. Uh, we, you know, we put a lot of time into every aspect of it. I mean, you, you name it, we, we studied it and beat it to death and talked about it for days and weeks. Uh, so it, we we're trying to build the best boat we possibly can, but this gifts, it's in my heart. When we return, George Labonte joins dreamboat owner Chris Francis aboard his 24-foot Morgan in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Armstrong. Experience the Armstrong Advantage. Do you have the Armstrong Advantage? In its most basic form, an Armstrong outboard bracket improves the efficiency of your outboard motor. This equates to a faster time to plane and higher top speeds. The list of advantages continue with improved maneuverability, added space, and a quieter ride. Adding a swim platform accompanied by an Armstrong boarding ladder will certainly add to your day out on the water. Isn't it time for you to gain the Armstrong advantage? Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida sportsmen began these features 30 years ago, and the dreams just keep getting better. Where one person might be trying to save money on affecting repairs or making improvements to a boat on their own rather than hiring a professional, another just might enjoy the challenge of learning new skills and flexing their creative muscles a little bit. Yet another motivation might involve a person who has a very particular boat in mind to suit a specific purpose in their life, and in the case of today's show, that's exactly what we're up against. Join us today for a trip to meet Chris Francis, a fishing guide out of Cedar Key, Florida, where we spent some time aboard his 1988 Morgan 24. I purchased it from a guy so I could uh, make my dream boat. Uh, back in the day when I seen this boat for years, I tried to, uh, to get it, purchase it from the gentleman and uh, missed the sale a couple times. And finally in 2017, I was able to buy the boat I picked the Morgan because there's a lot of boats out there that just don't have the beam of the Morgan. Uh, the Morgan is a really wide boat. It's a shallow drafting boat for the size boat it is. And for guiding, it has a lot of room for my clients to move around. Uh, just freedom, freedom to move. Came out of a, a regular old skiff and it just, it's night and day difference between that, the ride, uh, the comfort, 
it's just a whole lot more uh, comfortable for my clients and stuff too. So definitely a, a better boat than what I had. It was a, a guide boat that was being used for grouper fishing. So it had the, the pilot house on the front and for the type of fishing I do, the pilot house wasn't gonna be the best situation for me. So I tore the pilot house off, tore the roof off, and then at that point, ripped the floor out uh, because it was wood and I just wanted to put everything back synthetic uh, just so that we have no problems with rot. Me and some friends did most of it except for the floor. Um, but we have a lot of hours on sanding, we have a lot of hours on uh, just making it what we want. Yeah, I had a good buddy, he, uh, he's a painter. He, uh, he painted the motor on my boat. It's, it's amazing. Uh, he also painted the hull and everything else on that boat. He helped me sand and fare and do all that stuff. I, the boat has a 200 Yamaha. It rides comfortable with what it has. That 200 pushes that thing at about 40 knots, which is pretty well for that boat. It's fuel efficient. Uh, really get good fuel mileage on that boat uh, to go just do anything I want. Now, in addition to the usual paintwork and structural repairs Chris completed on this Morgan, he also added a few simple but functional features to the boat to help make his day's guiding anglers a little less complicated. I had the tower from another boat and I pulled it off and put it on this, so I actually had the guy who did the fiberglass work, he made that console fit perfect for that tower. And we do a lot of fishing, a lot of sight fishing on uh, triple tail or some redfish, cobia, getting that tower and we could run along looking uh, for fish. And it's, I love it. I'd rather ride from up there than anywhere else in the boat. You can see everything, you know, just all the, all the fish, all the turtles, everything. We also put an 84 inch trolling motor on the front, on the bow. And uh, with that, it helps me be able to get up into shallower areas without using my big motor and tearing that thing up. Uh, I can use that trolling motor, sneak in there, keep quiet, get in there, get on some fish. And then when I do get on the fish, you know, you can hit that anchor button and it'll just hold you right there. I also uh, put some custom tackle storage trays in the back of the boat where you can slide your tackle trays in and just makes everything clean. Put your tackle away when you're done. You can pull out a tray, do what you have to do, fold it up, put it away, and it's out of the way, not rattling around the boat, beating around the boat. One thing we can take away from Chris's story is when you have a vision of what your dream boat will look like, it definitely pays to be patient and wait for the right one to come along before you jump into a project. The project, when I took it on, I looked around, looked at a bunch of different boats and just knew that that boat, the way it was, was gonna make the boat that I needed for guiding. It just makes a big difference to just be patient, pick your boat, and if it takes you a couple years to get it, just do it, wait, and it'll come around eventually. Based on our time spent on the water with Chris, his finished project was clearly worth the wait. And that old Morgan not only helped him realize his dream, but would continue to serve him and his clients well into the future. After an initial investment of $26,000, and spending $19,000 on repairs and custom modifications. The cost of Chris's dream boat comes to a total of $45,000. When we return, the technicians at TRB repower a very custom 28-foot Bertram. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join the crew at TRB as they repower a familiar 28 foot Bertram. Customized by Jim and Jimmy Wells. Here at Two Rivers Boat Works, we were recently contacted by Jim and Jimmy Wells about their super custom 28 Bertram. It was on Project Dreamboat last year. These guys went all out, full rebuild, ground up on this boat. They're running a set of 250s now. They're hoping to get a little bit more power out of the new 300s. I wasn't really quite sure what to expect out of these new 300s on the boat. The boat's kind of like a one-off build. Nobody really has one. Nobody's really done this. Kind of crazy deal. Uh, obviously, we're going from V6 to V8. We're going from a heavier motor to a lighter motor. 
He's also going to the new DTS controls, which to break that down is digital throttle systems. Um, the difference between that and cable is obviously you don't have the feedback from the cable, you don't have to force it anymore. And being that a second station, you don't have to run cables up to the second station, connect it all and hope that it's not stiff. It makes it very smooth, easy to operate. Once we got everything finished up here at TRB with the boat, Jim loaded it up, took the boat down to Bobby Birdsall, down to Birdsall Marine to get a couple things, you know, added to the boat and changed on the boat to his needs and, uh, and then took it home and he's enjoying it. We had originally built the boat um, with a pair of used motors that my neighbor had. Um, so they were, by this point, about 14 years old. They were the whole start of this boat. This boat was not going to happen unless it was True. those engines. So, I mean, we do owe it to those things for even having this thing and diving into this wormhole of Bertrams and just <laughs> turning it into center consoles and walk-arounds and all this crazy stuff. Once we proved out that the boat ran good, we decided to put new engines on it. I had seen two rivers, really, for the first time when um, I was on Project Dreamboat last year. Want a little bit more horsepower, so we went from two 250s to two 300s just to get a little bit higher cruise. Um, and what we saw as well as some increased fuel economy. Runs about eight miles an hour faster and cruises about uh, nine miles an hour faster. I think something that really got affected with it is the ride. It's a lot quieter, it's a lot less vibrations, they smoother, and I think that's some credit to the controls being electronic and the technology there. It really just is, it makes docking easier, it makes just cruising easier, you got one throttle control for both engines and it just makes the boat ride so much better and so much smoother. When you're looking at a repower, it's a huge financial, it almost looks like a financial burden. You know it costs a lot of money, you know it's gonna take a lot to do it, but looking in the future on what you get out of it, you get warranty, you get smiles per gallon, you get everything you want out of it. And there's not much more you can take away from that if the boat outperforms the way it did before. Sum up the experience, it's hard to, it's hard to spend the kind of money it costs to repower, but hands down, um, you know, it, what was a, a new rebuild boat is, um, it feels like a brand new boat. It's definitely worth it. Um, lots of compliments on the boat, but most importantly, we as a family just have really enjoyed having the new reliable engines on there. So looking forward to our first Bahamas trip and test that reliability out in that high-speed cruise. Working with these guys, they're your true diehard Project Dreamboat guys. They're craftsmen, they can build the boats inside and out. And, you know, word on the street is, is they may have another project in their back pocket. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The experts at Rocky Point Boat Works take on updating and customizing a 19-foot twin V. George Labonte joins Lance and Don Mariotti aboard their tricked-out 261 Mako. And the technicians at Two Rivers supply fresh horsepower for a speed-hungry bass angler.